a sine wave generator can be made from an amplifier and a bandpass filter. In previous videos, we've seen how to engineer both amplifiers and bandpass filters, and we're going to put that knowledge to use in this video to actually make a sine wave generator. It turns out that you only need a single amplifier and a single bandpass filter to make it work. We'll start with the amplifier. I'm going to make a simple drawing of an amplifier. This looks a little bit like an op amp, but I'm going to leave off all of the ancillary components. So this particular amplifier has a gain of A. I have an amplifier with me today. It's actually a guitar amplifier. Let's take a look at it. This guitar amplifier has various knobs on it. I've got it hooked up to a microphone right now. Let's take a look at some of these knobs. It turns out that only two of them are going to be important for the demonstration in this video. We have the volume knob, which controls the gain of the guitar amplifier. And then over on the right side, there's another knob called tone. And it turns out that this tone can change the transfer function of the filter that's built into this amplifier. I'll demonstrate how this works. If I talk into the microphone and turn the volume knob to the right, my voice sounds louder, and if I turn the volume knob to the left, then my voice is not as loud. The volume knob controls the gain. However, the other knob, the tone knob, controls a bandpass filter that's built into this amplifier. Let me demonstrate it. If I turn the tone knob all the way down, then you can hear that my voice sounds a little bit deeper. That's because the lower frequencies are being amplified more than the higher ones. Conversely, if I turn the tone knob all the way up, my voice sounds a little bit higher pitched than normal because the higher frequencies are being amplified more. In other words, the tone knob controls the center of a bandpass filter that's built into this amplifier. So let's go ahead and add that to the drawing. What happens to a signal as it passes from the bandpass filter into and out of the amplifier? Let's imagine the situation when that signal is noise. What does the spectrum look like for noise? Let's go ahead and plot the signal amplitude versus frequency for noise. White noise has relatively flat spectral content, meaning it has equal components of low and high frequencies, and that's what I've plotted here. What does the transfer function look like for a typical bandpass filter? If it doesn't have very many poles, then it would look something like this. The center frequency in the example of the guitar amplifier is controlled by the tone knob. After the bandpass filter, then the signal resembles the transfer function of the bandpass filter. The high and low frequency components have been filtered out. We don't have a very strong signal overall. After the amplifier, that will be different. So the amplifier itself doesn't alter the spectral content. It just adds gain to it. What if we wanted to generate a sine wave? How can we use a bandpass filter and an amplifier to generate a sine wave? Let's remind ourselves what the target is. Our target is a signal amplitude versus frequency graph that's just a straight line. As you can see, we started with a signal with relatively flat spectral content, and after bandpass filter and amplifier, we have something that more closely resembles the target. So if we start adding more amplifiers and more bandpass filters, then we can more closely approach a sine wave. Let's go ahead and add one more stage and see what the signal would look like. After two stages of bandpass filter plus amplifier, you can see that the graph of signal amplitude versus frequency does indeed more closely resemble our target graph. In other words, our signal looks more and more like a sine wave. You might wonder, why do we need the amplifiers? Why can't we just use a bandpass filter? The problem with that is a passive bandpass filter, for instance, will always have some attenuation at all frequencies, including the target frequency. So we have to have amplification in order to make sure that that frequency stays present in the signal, even as we filter out all of the frequencies that we don't want in the signal. Two stages made a relatively good signal. But in order to make a very, very pure sine wave, we're going to have to have more stages. We might need, for example, a thousand stages, but we're obviously not going to be able to engineer a circuit with a thousand different bandpass filter and amplifier stages. So we're going to put just a single bandpass filter and amplifier into a loop. We're going to use that same filter over and over again in order to effectively convert a two-pole filter into a thousand-pole filter or something like that. So we've already drawn out what the signal amplitude looks like when it goes through the loop a single time. So this is the first round. What would that signal amplitude look like the second round through the loop? What would the signal look like the third round through the loop? What would that signal look like the thousandth round through the loop? 
This is our strategy for generating a sine wave. We're going to demonstrate this in a moment with the guitar amplifier, but before we do the demonstration, let's draw out the exact situation we have with the guitar amplifier. The guitar amplifier that I'll be using for the demonstration has a bandpass filter, which I can control with the tone knob, and it has an amplifier gain of A, which I can control with the volume knob. When I last spoke through the guitar amplifier, I demonstrated both of these knobs. But how are we going to make a loop? Well, the simplest way to make a loop is to just hold the microphone over near the speaker. And I can actually adjust the gain of the loop a little bit by controlling the distance between the microphone and the speaker. If the microphone is closer to the speaker, then there's more amplification around the loop. And if I hold them a little bit further apart, then the loop gain is a little bit weaker. So let's go ahead and try that out with the guitar amplifier. So I'm going to start with the tone knob turned all the way down to the lowest possible frequency. And then I'm going to bring the microphone closer and closer to the speaker. And when I get it fairly close, you can hear that we've indeed generated a tone. It wasn't really a pure sine wave, but it had a reasonably well-defined frequency. Let's turn the tone knob up to a medium frequency. Let's try that demonstration again. All right, now finally let's turn the tone knob all the way up to the highest frequency and we'll do the demonstration a third time. Brace yourself. All right, so we've just demonstrated a sine wave generator and we've changed the center of the passband of the filter that's built into that guitar amplifier by adjusting the tone knob. By doing that, we were able to synthesize a low frequency, a medium frequency, and a high frequency. In the next videos, we're going to use the same strategy to do that, but we're going to do it with circuits. We're going to use, for example, a two-pole filter and put it into a loop with an op amp or a transistor amplifier. From that, we'll be able to synthesize very pure sine waves.